First and foremost, uh, we have to have a very fine and uh, vibrant and uh, working infrastructure. And whether it's the heartland or across the US, it's, our infrastructure is aging. And we have many systems that are suffering from chronic underinvestment. Uh, so we've essentially taken a generation off from paying and maintaining for our infrastructure. And we are really seeing what's ha what the, uh, happens when you do that whether it be potholes, whether it be uh, lack of uh, clean water, uh, whether it be the grid crashing uh, periodically. So it's really a problem that we have not maintained uh, our infrastructure, no less expanded it where needed. A big part of that's gonna be green infrastructure and you know, in addition to China trying to take the lead or, or commit its own commitments, it's going to be more active globally um, through the BRI Belt and Road Initiative to promote um, in other initiatives. Uh, there could be opportunities for the U.S. if we were to re-engage with China, re-engage on, on the Paris Accord and other agreements uh, to help invest in carbon emissions reduction technology and infrastructure. And then, you know, lastly, uh, there's a just a huge demand for infrastructure. You know, the, the latest estimates are between 2018 and 2030 about $26 trillion worth of demand uh, for new infrastructure in the developing world. Right now, the U.S. spent last year about $34 billion in foreign aid, and only a small fraction of that was actually in the form of the infrastructure. So uh, there's huge opportunity to collaborate, not just with China, but other countries, really re-engage and try to invest and help with uh, more global infrastructure investments. I don't want to overstate this. The U.S. did see a better uh, better performance than many of its peer countries. Uh, many nations did fairly well, and it's really those nations that were able to invest uh, through different means in their uh, in upgrading their their infrastructure to uh, to more modern technology. Um, but the U.S. Uh, did remarkably well, especially compared to some of its peer nations in Europe that that depend on a more sort of utility uh, style model. Um, U.S. You know we have you know private competition, dynamic competition, large between uh, two networks of the that uh, originally built the telephone network, the copper telephone network, and the, the cable, uh, the coax-based television network. Um, so we were able to have dynamic competition between those uh, two network players um, uh, as compared to some countries that don't have the same uh, competitive dynamics or didn't have the same cable plant already built into their uh, broadband system. Um, and so long story short, uh, the, the U.S. Did, uh, did really quite well. We had a, a smaller dip in performance, about 1%, not really a perceptible uh, change in performance with uh, like 30% uh, growth in demand. And we also recovered from that dip uh, much more quickly than some of our peer nations that take a different regulatory approach. In terms of what is uh, going on, I think uh, many different levels of smart roads are being implemented in different cities and different states, and, they, and it's for different purposes. Like I think in South Georgia, there are part of the highways that are making it with solar panels, uh, and they are generating, and they have storage facilities there as well. And there are, um, there are other states that they are implementing different sensors and connectivity, which is always a challenge there as well, because if you have sensors and you don't have the, co the connectivity or the computation capability, then what are you going to be doing with the data that you are collecting there? Uh, but there are part of the highways that are uh, equipped with different sensors for different applications. Like, for example, if you know that there are ice on the road, if you know that, um, or even, you know, th there was uh, as simple as if we are going to be doing de-icing, do you want to use the salt everywhere throughout the area or are there areas that need more attention? So I think there are many different things that we can learn from the smart roads. Mm -hmm.